Hello, 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 everybody. I don't know why I always start these like I feel like Jim Carrey in uh, a series of unfortunate events because <laughs> he does the hello, hello, hello. Although, I guess, did Neil Patrick Harris do that in the TV show too? Did anybody watch that? I watched that whole show. Um, and I got to tell you, it was a little bit unfulfilling, like an unfulfilling, I felt unfulfilled by the end which is unfortunate because like I enjoyed the show, but I don't know if that's how the books goes. So uh, I am just posting my Instagram story right now. There we go. So we can get our friends on over there. Mr. Arthur, my Corgi is staring at me right now because, um, uh, he has discovered where a couple T O Y's were hidden up here. And now he's sitting and staring at me. He even brought the threads of one of them over, but they've been, put away right now, but he's unhappy about it, but he's over here. Yeah. You're such a good boy. Are you such a good boy? You are such a good boy. Hold on. Let me, let me see if I can pop him in here for a second. I think I can activate this as like a camera, right? There he is. <laughs> are you so, are you so, so, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I was trying to pet you and you jumped in at the same time. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. See all my artwork I've been working on? That's my Power Ranger thing. I have nowhere to put it. It's a projector I got to try and do. Um, so downstairs where like my doorway is, I'm trying to do a... Um, I was trying to see if I could drape a... Uh, uh, like a bed sheet and do a, like a movie night, but I did not buy a bright enough one. So that's an Amazon return over there. Um, I guess it has to be a lot brighter. I don't know. I don't really have experience with it. Um, but yeah, I use, um, I thought I could do it with this one, but I don't know. I got to find another one a little bit brighter and stuff like that. So that is that. And, uh, this is my beautiful baby over here. Um, how's everybody doing this week? Hope everyone's doing well. I just wanted to say, I'm going to do a weird quick zoom in thing. Don't judge me. Look at my earring. It's not to show you my earring. It's because I think my camera was out of focus. Um, I hope everybody's gotten their week off to uh, a good start. Um, let me just send one more message. I am so sorry. I don't mean to keep doing this. I uh, just need to disconnect my phone here and um, get us started. Let some let some folks who are joining us. Hello, hello everybody. Glad to see everyone in here. Um, this evening, my beverage of choice, I think I had this last week too, is my, uh, I think I had one left. I think this is my last one of the peanut butter deja mou from Hidden Springs Ale Work. I did add one shot of, um, the screwball peanut butter whiskey to this to pop the peanut butter flavor up a little bit. Cause I, you know, I finished dinner and I got a little bit of a sweet tooth today. I don't usually have a very big sweet tooth, but today I'm like, looking for everything. And I was like, I don't want more candy. I wasn't even going to have a beer. And I was like, you know what? I'd rather have beer than the candy. So it's very peanut buttery today. Um, let me just do this really quick. Anybody see, uh, any movies over the weekend? Anything interesting? Anything good? doesn't have to be in the movie theater. Could have been on Netflix. Could be something new, something old. Um, uh, sorry, hold on. Uh, I, uh, am I watched anything? It's like, oh, I wanted to give you all an update on, um, my grandmother. She is home now out of the hospital. She is doing well, feeling better each day. But I, I just wanted to say thank you for all of the, um, you know, the well wishes, the comments that people were making. Um, that was all, that was very, very thoughtful of all of you. Um, so I appreciate that very, very much. Um, you know, it means a lot. I'm a firm believer of like sort of that like very positive um, thinking, you know, that it's very much like if we all are concentrating and all at once, uh, it'll be like, you know, we can change the world for the better. But I do believe that like positive thinking can also be, um, you know, healing, restorative. Uh, I just think it's, you know, I don't know. It's and it's our it's it's 
It's easier said than done. It's harder than it is to stay positive and continue to maintain those positive thoughts. You know what I mean? So um, it's nice to have other people like in that same river with you, right? Uh, okay, let me see. Do, do, do. Sorry, just making this last post I forgot to make. There we go. I put it on, I've been trying to be better about sharing it on Facebook because my grandmother has Facebook now and I think she might be able to figure out how to click this link and then, um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, don't think she has yet, but I'm going to try and teach her. And, uh, but I'm impressed with her. She's got a, she's got an iPad and they love reading the obituaries and it is insane to me, but it's their way of being like, we got to see who we've outlived. And I'm just like, Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> um, anyway, so let's see what, let's see what everybody had to say. Let's see what we, we're, we're talking with today. Okay. Um, oof, week in Disney. That can be exhausting on the, the feet and the legs. I know Arthur, he's looking at me. Uh, hello. Hello. Um, I didn't go all the way back. Sorry. Megan watched Empire Records in honor of Rex Manning Day. Um, oh, Ross, what are we making for dinner? Oh, try a tip. Potatoes and corn on the grill. Mm -mm -mm. Um, oh, yeah, the eclipse today. Okay, all right. So here's the thing. The eclipse, I forgot to order um, those those special like type of glasses. And my like, hair's really poofy today. Uh, and so I was like, I tried to go around to a couple places first thing this morning and cause Warby Parker was giving away free glasses and they were th like, it said it on their voicemail for the store. It was like, there's no more anywhere. Don't come to the store. And then, um, I think they said like Seven Eleven. I didn't see it there. And then Sonic had that like eclipse shake you could buy. So I was like, Oh, I've got it. I found a Sonic near me. I'll go to there. I'll get it. And guess what? I ordered the shake and the, when they delivered it, they're like, you know, there's no more glasses. Right. And I was like, I, Tried to ask that when I ordered it, and you said yes. So I was a little like, Ugh, okay, it's whatever. Um, so I didn't end up with glasses, but Warby Parker on their website did have a, uh, like you printed out these two sheets, and basically you just put the pinhole in the one sheet, and then like you had to line the sheets up outside with your back to the sun, and it would project like a very, very, very tiny eclipse onto it. So I got... I saw a little, little picture of it. I did that thing where I accidentally was just like, well, did it start yet? And I was like, no! Um, you know, I was looking more at the clouds to see if it was cloud coverage and, you know, but, um, so I saw it that way. But um, also on like, uh, if you have like Hulu or anything, I think ABC had like a streaming thing where they were doing it from like one to four and they had people set up all throughout the, um, throughout the totality uh, area. So it was really, honestly, it was really kind of moving to watch it. So I had it on, on my, uh, my desk at work. I got like a little Roku to plug in. And, um, and, uh, so I've, I, I've been like, I, cause I like like a white noise in the background while I'm working. So I like, I put that on and while I was editing video today, I was like, Oh, watching it. And when it went to that first totality, it was, it was kind of like beautiful. Like every, everywhere, everyone's sentiments was very emotional. Robin Roberts was like crying. Um, and, this other guy was very like emotional and then his mom caught and it was just like this whole thing where I was like, this is so beautiful. So anybody, my, my friend Kim, she got to go, um, with, with our friend Lisa and, um, uh, my goodness, I don't know. I've never met the other person, but she was telling about how nice she is. And they're, they're like, Oh, we're talking about you and everything. And they went, um, somewhat cause she lives in Milwaukee. So she was only like a couple hours drive away from a totality area. And so they drove and I'm very happy that they got that experience because watching all these people have it, I'm like, that is so cool. That is like so, so, so freaking cool. So, um, I think it was really awesome. I think if there's an opportunity to, to be a part of it, another one within a traveling area. I know they're saying the next one in the United States, I think is 20 years from now, but that doesn't mean it won't be one somewhere else in another country between now and then. So it's kind of like, oh, it's something to look out for. Cause it, everybody seemed, it was a very like, it seemed like a very, like people reference like the like spirituality moment, sort of like they had these like experiences and I was just like, wow, this is like really cool to kind of watch it happen in real time across the country. And see how, it, it, and a lot of them talked about how it like brings a lot of people together. So it was really cool to see this experience. And then, you know, like 
you're you're witnessing this like crazy phenomena you know that makes you feel at least for me you know a part of something but you know smaller in terms of scale because you're just like you're a part of these like intergalactic bodies moving across each other and we're just like these little ants observing this like one window of thing but also the fact that they figured out the science behind this like hundreds of years ago is just is wild to me and so it's just like it's so cool I, I thought it was like really cool to kind of just watch and hear everyone's perspective on that so that was a lot of fun so hopefully um wherever in a viewer you were able to get to see a little bit of it um like i said i only did it through the pinhole where like you put a pinhole through two papers, you line them up, and it just projects like a teeny tiny version of it. And so that was cool. But, um, oh, Newcastle, I mean, your wife has been watching Dairy Girls on Netflix. Very good show. I have not watched. I actually think I have now seen all of season thir the final season. I, I thought I had missed like an episode or two maybe, but um, that's a really funny show. I like that show a lot. Every one of those girls on that show is phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Oh, Lana finally saw Beetlejuice. Okay. She's got to be ready for the new one. Uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Juice is loose. Um, the completely made up adventures of Dick Turpin. I feel like I saw a commercial for this. Um, and I can't remember what that is. Uh, yeah, Diane survived an earthquake, the eclipse, and life. What will next bring for, for real? Are you living in a Ghostbusters movie where it's like... Next thing you know, cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria. Um, that's it's just so cool. Uh, oh yeah, I saw it was overcast in some areas, which was unfortunate. Which in some areas where it was overcast, it worked in people's benefits because you were able to see it a little more clearly. Or, like, it acted like another filter, another ray or whatever. I mean, you still don't look up. You still don't look up, you know? Um, yeah. I forgot about it. I feel like I missed the 2017 one because I don't know that I was, like, paying attention to it when it happened as closely. I'm just looking at Artie because he looks like he's up to something. Okay, he's resting now. Um... Who, what spam phone number is calling me at 8.45 on a Monday night? How dare you? How dare you? Uh, RD's favorite T-O-Y is a B-A-L-L, um, but we have nowhere to throw that around, and so he is very sad. So every year, I used to drive him to my mom's house for two weeks, and he'd get to play for hours each day. And it was like his little Christmas present, but I don't think we're going to be able to do those long trips anymore. And so my goal is to really just get out of this apartment and into a house or a townhouse that has even the smallest sliver of a yard. So he can have uh, he can have the ability to to do that every day. But he also loves TOIs with squeakers in them because he loves to murder the squeaker. But then he likes to take the skin and we're supposed to play tug of war with that or I throw that to him and stuff like that. So. He loves also. He's a, he's and he would literally do it all day until he collapses. So he got to play during an hour during my therapy session this morning because he had found them while I was on the on my Zoom, and so we, we toss it back and forth a little bit. Though so. um, I have not watched the Three Body Problem on Netflix yet. I'm not 100 percent sure if I'm going to or not. I'm waiting for like a little more feedback. I heard it was only like at a, like 75 percent, and there's some other things like I haven't watched Monarch on Apple TV yet. There is that Kristen, uh, Kristen Wiig show that has Ricky Martin in it, which is my first true love. Uh, so I'm like, I got to watch that. I, I want to like watch some of that. I think that might only be like a 30 minute. Um, you know, I've been going through my things where I like, so I watch, uh, I'll watch, um, I'm almost, I'm on like season six of uh, Will and Grace halfway through and then Brooklyn Nine-Nine is over here ready, lined up and ready to go. And I'm really excited to like go through all of that again. And, um, so like, I've got that lined up. I've been watching, uh, the new season of ghosts on Paramount plus I'm all caught up on that. I feel like this season has been great. That show is so good. That's, that's one of those shows where it's just like, it's very funny and it's, but it also feels like such like a nice show. I don't know. It's got like a nice, I feel very good when I watch it, like a very calming effect. Um, and uh, where has Bob's Burgers been? Because I feel like they're really short on new episodes. I don't know about that. I thought maybe my 
thing wasn't keeping track of it, but I looked and I was like, no, I'm all caught up, I guess. Maybe I just love it so much that I'm always like, where's the next episode? Where's the next episode? I did. I feel like I watched. Oh, I caught up on X-Men 97. I think I saw Ross, you say something about that in here. Um, that show is very good. So what I'm trying to do is like batch it. So like two episodes and then two episodes because there was that first week and then I waited this week and now it's two. So, I mean, I guess I'll have an episode this week, but it is like it's good. OK, I want to bring this up, too. Um, I don't feel like. I have Melissa, I have not watched the UK version of Ghost yet, but I do have it saved in my Paramount Plus. But uh, D is asking, do I plan to see the new Twisters movie? You know, yeah, I know myself. I know I'm going to see it. But here's the here's the truth of it. I really hope it is connected to the other movie and not like a remake or just like another movie that is the same because it shows the Dorothy and it shows the things going up into the Twister and stuff. So. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it. Um, you know, I kind of wish it was still in that same universe or there was some relation to that movie. But, and there still could be, and we just don't know that yet, so I don't know. Um, oh, my God. Jay, what? Bob's in May? Oh, I guess it's April. So maybe they're doing, like, a run-up of all the episodes. Oh, my God. It's already April, gang. I can't believe that. Um, Oh my God, Gav, this is so crazy. Gav is saying, hi, Rono. Wondered if you still have the Ghostbusters magazine I sent you a few years ago from the UK and wondered if you've seen the Moon movie. I am not even kidding you. Literally yesterday, I picked up that magazine and showed it to my friend because it's, it's behind us. Like, I can't reach it from right here. I'd have to go stand up and get it. But I literally keep it right here, wedged between uh, my Power Rangers encyclopedia and my Back to the Future um, uh, um inside editions like encyclopedia book uh so it is a cherished possession of mine and i have seen the new movie i enjoyed the new movie i you know i i is it my favorite ghostbusters movie no but i enjoy it enough i hope it's not the last one i hope they make another one um you know i definitely liked afterlife better but i think this one was like i i enjoyed watching it honestly every time i watch it i've seen it three times Every time I see it, I like it a little bit more. So, uh, you know, I kind of like let go of those things where I was like, oh, man, I wish they hadn't done this like one thing or that thing. And just in terms of a storytelling standpoint, it's not like a Ghostbusters gatekeeping thing or anything like that, because I really enjoyed. I'll say it again. I talk about it a lot. I really enjoyed how they um, the inclusion of the uh, like classic characters I felt like they were better woven throughout this movie than they were the last movie. Um, but I liked it. I, I really um, I, I enjoyed it. Thoughts on don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. I didn't think it was real. Uh, my friend sent me a link to it, like a tease to it a couple weeks ago. And I was like, there's no way that's real. And now there's, there's a movie coming out and I'm all like, oh my God, I, I watched that Christina Applegate one forever. And that's the hard part. I don't know that you can beat Christina Applegate. So I haven't seen the trailer for the new one. Really. I just have seen a tease about that. Um, I know there's a bunch of movies like coming out where I keep being like, oh God, is that out this weekend? Cause I'm like, I want to go, but I don't want to go at the same time. Cause I'm like, I don't know. Lately it feels like I'm hyping myself into going to the movies, but um, like I want to see the new Planet of the Apes movie. Um, I feel like there was, uh, you know what? I'll just pull out my phone. Let me look. Let me see what's playing right now on AMC and what's coming soon. Um, Cause I know there's some stuff coming up. I know there's, I saw there's a re-release of The Mummy coming out, and I'm like, oh, do I want? I haven't watched like the original Mummy in like years, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe I maybe I go watch that. Um, I just saw they added more showtimes of the Spider-Man replay too, uh, but they're in like the crap theaters here. But um, let's see here, what's in the movie theater right now? Where I'm like, oh, I want to watch that. I kind of want to see Love Lies Bleeding. Um, you know, there's that late night with the devil has really good reviews, but I heard they use some AI in it and I was like, oh, I don't want to support that. Um, I know it doesn't, my like one thing doesn't change anything. Wow. That's it. Um, okay. Well then what is coming soon? Um, Civil War, that is the movie that's coming out this week. Or, yeah, this weekend. I do want to see that, but at the same time, I'm like, it's making me very nervous. Um, but I also have read a lot about it where it's not really meant to mirror anything to do with really right now other than people being very divided. Um, so, mm. 
Um, oh, I guess they're re-releasing Selena in the theater again. Um, yeah, I don't know about Challengers. I do love that Zendaya. Tarot looks looks interesting. Oh, there's an early screening of Planet of the Apes two days before. Usually they'll give you like a poster if you go to that one. Oh, well, fall. So that's that. Not going to that one. <laughs> I didn't even know tickets weren't on sale yet. Um, I There is a poster for a movie theater, for a, a movie called Sting that just has a giant spider on the ceiling. And I was like, I don't even like walking past the poster. I have yet to see a preview or hear anything about it. And I can tell you right now, I... It's like giving me chills right now. There's that Henry Cavill movie, The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. That comes out next week. That looks interesting. Um, that Abigail, like that horror movie where it's like they're, it starts out as like a kidnap movie, but the person they kidnap, the girl they think they kidnap for like the thing ends up being like a vampire. Um, so they're kind of trapped. That looks interesting. I do want to see The Phantom Menace when that's re-released. The Fall Guy. I can't wait for that. That one I'm looking forward to. Um, the Fall Guy. Uh, yeah, it's like a got kind of a weird movie year this year. Oh, Shrek Two is going to be re released on April twentieth anniversary. I don't know what this Sasquatch Sunset is. Oh, it's just Jesse Eisenberg, Eisenberg's movie. Um, yeah, those things. So those are some of the movies. Obviously, Deadpool. Hello. Um. Okay, Melissa's saying, just watched the Ghostbusters movie and loved. I saw all of the movies prior to as a recap. Do you ever play the Ghostbusters video game? Also consider them third movie. Yeah, you know, um, actually, you know, you said that, and I'm going to add that on here. Um, I saw that it was recently remastered into a Switch version, and I, I never finished playing my Wii version, because I didn't really play a lot of games on the Wii, other than there was like a side-scrolling Mario anniversary game that I really liked, and... There was, like, another game. But, like, for me, the Wii was a lot of, like, oh, people are coming over. We're playing the tennis. We're playing that. Um, and so I never, like, ended up really getting into that one as much. Um, I forget, like, happened. I think I, like, moved when it came out or something. And so that's why it was, like, what it didn't come out. But I know all the original people. Ghostbusters N Nintendo Switch game. Let's see. I have a PlayStation 4 Ghostbusters game, but it has nothing to do with the movies or anything like that. And I did get this Spirits Unleashed game, but I think it's like an online co-op playing game, and I don't do that. Um, yeah, so Ghostbusters, the video game remastered. Oh. I'm going to have to add that to my wish list here. Because I would play it on my, I'll play it on my Switch. Oh. I... Uh, What was I going to say? I feel like also I need to move because Slimer's head's come up here. I think Slimer should be like here. And then because this is shorter, should go up here. Or like this is shorter. So like those shorter things should go up there. And then Slimer should be like right there. I think, I think I'm going to do that while we're talking, if you don't mind. Ghostbusters. I'm just looking that up now. Now you guys have got me on this. Nintendo Switch. Um, so I, I realized... Uh, I had I had finished playing um, Spider-Man 2, which I had been looking forward to for forever. Phenomenal game. Loved it. Uh, on the PS5, uh, which was wonderful. Uh, this PS5, I'm loving it. Um, I did finally get that Harry Potter game. But I got it on sale, and I haven't played it yet. And every time I go to play it, she says some awful new thing that I'm just like, you know what? I, so like, it keeps being very off-putting. So like, I want to play the game, but at the same time, I'm like, Bleh. So... Um, I got, uh, I forgot I had gotten that new Mario game, Mario Wonder, and I barely played that yet, too, on the Switch. So I'm like, oh, well, I gotta play that. Oh, Sting is an H and Ten house, like a spider house? Ooh, I don't know if I could handle that. Oh, my God, I know. The final season of What We Do in the Shadows, I saw that Harvey Guillaume was just wrapped on production, and it makes me so sad. Uh, Trina, you missed it at the beginning. I was giving an update on my grandmother. She's doing much better. I'm going to give her a call um, tomorrow. and uh, But yeah, she's she's home now. Um, and then I will hopefully be going to see her um, very soon and uh, spend some time with her. And um, so that's good. Uh, Grandpa's doing well. My mother dropped her phone in a 
um, puddle. And so she hasn't had a phone for the last couple of days. So uh, I find her <laughs> lack of communication to be very disturbing. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Diane is asking, what house am I going to choose for the Harry Potter game? I am a Gryffindor. Sometimes people will be like, you're clearly a Hufflepuff. And I'll be like, that's rude. Not that every, I mean, everybody loves a Hufflepuff, right? But I feel like I'm more of a Gryffindor. I put bros over here because I forget what I was doing this. Oh, I was adding it because I wanted to watch it with my friend. Um, to my movies anywhere. But like, Slammer should be probably like right here, right? And then we can put, we can put the Power Ranger and this Morpher to go up here. Um, this is more like someday, I think if you're one of my Patreon supporters, I'm just going to turn this camera on one day or like, I think I'm going to do like a camera in the corner on the top shelf while you have over here and just like put the microphone on and just clean through my clutter and have you guys literally, you're my Patreon supporters, but you're also my emotional supporters and help me go through my stuff and be like, get rid of it, Rhino, sell it, donate it or whatever, you know, we'll do that. We'll do that that game there we go we'll put the i'm a little exhausted by the red ranger opening his mouth constantly so he can go he can go uh go up here for now i don't want to talk to you buddy we're we're not, i'm not feeling it right now with you so we're gonna put you up there see so now he's still up there which is good keep my evil railroad cup up here we'll put eddie eddie right there and because uh, you can't, it's not like you can see it too, too well. I keep this picture of Max over here too. My friend did that for me. And my other friend did this sticker of Powerline. I found a Powerline art thing somebody had gotten me last year. Oh, yeah, Allison, we got to do that. We got to do that Massachusetts reunion. Hell yeah. I'm down for that. I'm coming up. I'm coming up soon. I should actually think about doing that while I'm there. That would be a lot of fun. I would really enjoy that. Um, I know that Paul would like that. Oh, I know why I didn't put him down here. Because he's popped out. So he's like a little... I'm going to end up knocking him over. He had to be higher. Whatever. I'll do that later. Um, let's turn him on, though. Look, because I put a little light in him. Ooh. Anything that justifies why I spent money on a piece of plastic like that. Um, oh, look at me. He glows. He's cool. He's ambiance now. Do I, love, do I love you since you're a Hufflepuff? I said everybody loves a Hufflepuff. Um, yeah. No, I know. I, I meant like I'd, I'd subject uh, the other people to it. Um, no, I, uh, I um, yeah, I'm doing well. Um, question, one week on Disney property or two weeks off property in an, on, in an awesome property? Um, I think I would, I mean... I think I would do two weeks off property, but if you're looking to go to, to um, if you're looking to go to the parks the entire time, that's a long time at the parks. Like I would split it up between like, you know, give yourself vacation days, but like go to Universal, have a day to like where you visit some local Orlando restaurants, things like that. But I would stay close to the park because otherwise you're gonna really hate the driving. So um, it is awful to drive in Orlando, Florida. It is my least favorite place in the United States that I have driven so far. So, um, it just gets worse. And I had friends that tried to, uh, I don't want to say condescend, talk to me about it, but I was like, I was like, no, in Los Angeles, I was like, I get it. There's traffic all the time and it's very, you know, gridlocked most of the time and it takes two and a half hours to go somewhere. But I was like, the traffic doesn't feel that same way. And that this Orlando traffic is just like, it's like I'm grinding my teeth the entire time. It's fine. It's fine. We're not here to complain today. We're here to be happy. Yeah. But yes, Allison, 100%. I would love to do that. Um, I know, I know we had talked about doing something in the end of last year, but I would, I feel like I would like it. It would feed my soul. And I would be totally down with that. So I will say, I will message, I'll message separately about that. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, no, I know. I'll do a, I'll do another like meetup like I did. Um, I did one, when did I do that? Was that in February last year? No. 
it was cold. <laughs> but I was like, I was there, I was there last February, because it was my mom's 60th birthday. March, April, May. I thought I went again. I definitely went in February, March, April, May. I went somewhere in like April, I think, or May. I definitely, I was there in October because it was my grandfather's 90th birthday. And then I was there at Christmas. I think it was the October I did the meetup. I might have, but um, I know Jay, Jay was in there. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, try driving in Miami for a day. No, thank you. Um, but yeah. Where am I from in Massachusetts? Um, I am from Carver, Massachusetts. It is a very small town, um, but like halfway between Boston and the Cape. I'd say definitely closer to the Cape, I guess, technically. But uh, it is um, uh, Plymouth. It's like right next to Plymouth. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where I'm like, sometime I'm going to be like, let's meet a tree. Well, Everybody there never wants to go over the bridge into the Cape, but when I'm there, I'm like, that's where I got to get that beer. <laughs> so I like have to go there, but also I've, I've like knock on wood. I've had some good luck in terms of driving over, over and then back over. Um, yeah, Jay remembers too. It was a cold rainy day, but I cannot remember the time of year it was, but, um, and you drove me home. That's why I'm like, I don't remember when that was, but, uh, I, I think it was, I think it was October. I, I'm pretty sure it was October, but um, no, I have, I did used to drive, I've, dri I've driven in Boston, I don't, you know, um, I, uh, what was I going to say? I feel like there was another topic I was going to bridge to and I keep, my ADD is out of control today. Um, we talked, uh, we talked today in therapy, um, about some stuff that I, that I feel like we're going to bridge a little bit more, um, which was about how, um, I forget. Oh, I forget the like terminology, but it was basically like how we deal with shame, like and it, like embarrassment and things like that, and how people around us deal with it, and how the tools we use to deal with it and stuff, and how we feel and and all that sort of stuff. But uh, uh, Ken, yeah, Eatable Railroad magnets. Hold on, baby. What do we got over here? No, this is an Eatable Railroad interview. This is an Eatable Railroad mug. This is a Carver Library library card. It's my grandmother's. I have no idea why I have my grandmother's library card. But this is when the... I think this is from when the library was on... Uh, I have my sister's for some reason. When it was in our old... What is now a police station? No. It was the old police station. But this is a key. Do not operate Edaville switches. So these are the keys to the train track switches, I believe that would make the train go on one track or another that I took out of my grandfather's house. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they, uh, that's how they work anymore. And I hope to God they don't still work or, you know, like, what am I going to do with it? This is also my junior power Rangers, uh, official identification card, just so we're clear, just in case anyone had any questions about that. Um, but yeah, that's that. Oh, God. Um, sorry, I was, like, really excited to do this this week, and now I'm, like, bleh. I keep saying, um, and, like, stuttering over myself sometimes, and, like, I'm doing, thinking a million things. Oh, gotta watch my Quantum Leap, too. Uh, I saw the new show got canceled, which sucks, because I was definitely gonna watch that, but it was October. Okay, Jay was right. It was October was the last Massachusetts thing I did. Um, but yeah, yeah, those, those keys are for the tracks, which is at Eatable Railroad. So, um, or they are switch key. I mean, it says what they are on it, but I'm assuming they were for the track. So that's where I'm like, mm -mm. I thought they looked cool and they were on a old rope and I was like, I'm going to just take these. Um, it's time. I'm going to turn you off for a minute. Okay, pal. Thanks, buddy. Don't eat my hand. Let it go. Drop it. Drop it. Um, there we go. Um, uh, my grandfather worked for a railroad company in Lemonster area of Mass in the 40s through 70s, I believe. Lemonster 
I went to school in Fitchburg for a semester, a town next to Lemonster. Boy, oh boy, did I hate it for that second, but Lemonster was nice. Um, oh, thank you. The Vintage Pumpkin, he also actually comes from Eatable, but it's not, like, officially from Eatable. It's just a guy showed up at Eatable one day in, like, the 60s or something and left them all there. Um, and he left, like, a ton of them. My grandmother, like, took them and kept them, and um, so she had a whole bunch, and it's become, like, a rite of passage that all the grandchildren got to pick one, but I got two, so... <laughs> just saying. Um, but he's also on the table in um, the... Uh, uh, I just I want. I just said, in my head, I was like, it's Carousel of Progress, but I almost said, great movie ride. I was like, girl, you're having a stroke. I like to leave my Halloween stuff up all year. Um, if you guys... So I know it's become popular recently, but I'd like to say I've known about it for longer than this, so I'm cool. Uh, the band DJO. I know that one of his songs is popular right now, but did you guys know that it is Steve Harrington's band? That it is uh, Joe Kearney from, from uh, Stranger Things? So there's the song End of the Beginning. End of Beginning, which has been very popular. But the whole, the whole album's good. But it, I keep hearing it pop up in these things and I'm just like uh I'm just like kind of crazy to me that he has this whole other thing about him but I like that he's finding success you know what I mean uh yeah one day I will take everybody through this you know, so I think the goal hopefully moving before you know the, my lease is up in the end of August so hopefully getting out of here and moving and I think when I do that it'll be like a lot of videos of being like look at it all look at my stuff isn't it me yeah I'll be that person um, Diane, I have not been over to Epcot. I have not tried Nate's drink yet. I feel like we should go and should do like a video of it or something like that. Um, I know tomorrow, obviously I'm, I'm going to be in the studio all day. And then, uh, I think I have to go to Hollywood studios after that for a little bit. And then Wednesday, I think we're doing like a dining review Wednesday night. And, um, and then I forget what we're doing Thursday. I don't know what we're doing Thursday. Something, something, something. I don't know. Um, I have not gotten my tickets for the Disneyland Pride event yet. Those go on sale tomorrow at noon Eastern time. It says not before 9 a.m. California time, Pacific time. So I have like a bunch of alarms set and I am hoping that I get them uh, in there. And so hopefully I'll be able to get out there. But uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, Sarah. See, so the only reason I knew it was him was because a friend of mine had told me about it like a year or two ago or something like that. I don't know. It was like right when that album came out and I was just like, oh, cool. So now it's crazy that all of a sudden that random song is kind of blowing up and I'm like, do, do people know that's him? Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody else got, what do you all got going on this week? Anybody got anything fun? Anything we're not looking forward to doing? Because I'd like to hear about those too. So that we can, we can uh, hype you through it. I kind of disconnect, my, my phone keeps trying to like connect over here. Um, let me see, let me look at my calendar. I think I just brought you through pretty much my whole week here. Oh my God, I have to pick. Oh, I'm going to do my friend's podcast this weekend. Um, ugh. Taxes aren't done, are, are like in limbo. They're not not done. They're just like I gotta go do that, take care of that, and uh, I have to pick new health insurance. I have to do like expense reports. Blah. Why is being an adult like this? Why is it so hard? Has anyone made like a good drink, like a good mixed drink or anything like that? I feel like I need something new. I'm getting a little. I'm not bored, just kind of, yeah, because, like, my go-tos are, like, a gin or a bourbon, and I feel like, hmm, lately I just I feel too heavy when I have bourbon. Gin is still, is still my friend, but it's just kind of like, I'm just drinking, like, gin and fresca, or a gin and tonic, you know, or gin and soda, really, not gin and tonic. The tonic has, like, an insane amount of calories in it, so I was like, hmm, I'm going to cut that out. Um, So if anybody gets some new drinks, please let me know. Uh... I did look at a house, you know, this weekend, and unfortunately, uh, it did not come to fruition, but it had an area in this house where it had like a little, um, so it was kind of almost like built, it felt like in three sections, so it was like this side of the house in the front had a room, a dining room, and then two rooms, and then it was like wide open living room, you know, entryway, exit way, and then this side was like kitchen, master suite, you know, whatever, 
And um, what was cool was the dining room had this like dip in it that I'm sure was for like a China hutch or something like that. And I was like, no, that's going to be a bar. Like I'm going to put the mirrors in it. I'm going to put the shelves up and that's where I'll film. That's when I'll, that's where I'll do these mixed drinks. And, and then I can start to have that series again, you know, and, uh, and then we'll do a dining room table on the other side of it. And so it'd be like a lounge. I wanted it to be very loungy, like a wanted record player in there. This is the problem. I dreamt too big, too quickly about it. And, uh, it just, it didn't happen. So it's a bummer. Uh, I didn't know Ryan Gosling was in a band. I'm learning that right now in this chat. Oh, Shanita's learning how to make sourdough. Um, I'm in week two of getting my starter together. So my friend Kelly got really into that in the lockdown of the pandemic. And she would do like bagels, loaves of bread, stuff like that. I liked it. I'm, anytime someone learns how to make sourdough bread, I want to be their best friend because I love sourdough bread. Um, a lion's tail. Diane, you did tell me about a lion's tail. I feel like I have it written down in my notes, but I don't know if I got to making it. Um, I am eating an ice cream drumstick like a kid and drinking a glass of wine like an adult. Best of both worlds, baby. I love that. I love that. Oh, well, so the thing I was going to have with this was going to be, uh, I was going to be a little extra splurgy and do, um, you know, is it little Debbie, the, 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 uh, the nutty buddies, but, uh, I bought them on a whim one day because they remind me of my grandfather. And uh, I was like, uh, the problem is they don't last super long. So like I ate one, it, it clearly had expired like in the beginning of March. And I was like, oh, these are stale. So I had to throw the box away. So I basically ate one out of the whole box. But I guess that's the, the benefit of Little Debbie's is that they're not super expensive. So it's fine. But like the sweet spot for me to have Little Debbie's around is the oatmeal cream pies. I love those. Um, knowing you enjoy bourbon, a good box car or bourbon old fashioned sour is a good change from just drinking, uh, it up. I don't know that I've had a box car. I'm not going to lie. I'll have to look that up. Um, oh, Ross, you're coming into town again. Good Lord. You guys are here all the time. Five, four, five, five. We're at Saratoga. Um, Oh, wait, you're going to Kidani this weekend? Well, let me know. Um, does anyone have a good sourdough starter recipe for Shiva in the comments right now? Asking in here. Uh, Mark says, speaking of adulting, need to finally figure out my new dental plan this week because I changed from last year's and now I need to find a new dentist and cleaning set. Oh, my God. I, that's a nightmare. I feel like every time you get in the flow of that, especially with like a dentist, something always happens. You're like, OK, see you in six years. I guess I'll just live with this cavity. Um, do I enjoy bourbon straight or only a mixed drink? No, I, I actually, I prefer whatever bourbon. So if I was going to like buy a bourbon and have it on my shelf, I'd rather have it be a bourbon where like I could just pour it out and, and drink, you know, the two fingers or whatever you want to say, the ounce of it by itself. Um, so I try to invest in something like that, you know, but then the, 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 the line to walk for me is sometimes like I have a bourbon downstairs, which is the rabbit hole. Derringer is like an $80 bottle of bourbon and Rabbit Hole actually sent it to me, um, which was very nice of them. And I was like, this is expensive and I am going to milk this bottle. And there's like maybe like this much left in the bottle. But it is like that bourbon, I even though literally Rabbit Hole themselves on their website has some drinks with it and one sometimes I want to try, I know that I just love the taste of it so much by itself. I don't want to make, make a mixed drink out of it, so I won't use it for anything. And I know it's also the whole point of having it is to drink it, right? To have it, to enjoy it. We can't save it forever because no matter what, it's going to start evaporating and, you know, we'll lose it to time itself. So it's kind of this like, I don't know, there's something like romantic about that or like fantastical where you're like, you know, it can be this really, really precious thing, but it is a reminder of being like, you know, whatever it is. And I talked about this in another one of these live streams is where it's like, it's like a shirt, you know, a shirt you buy and you're like, oh, I'm going to wear this on the, on the perfect, the perfect occasion. And sometimes like a year or two goes by and that occasion never happens. And then it does and you go to put the shirt on and it doesn't fit anymore. So it's like, don't save it for that. Use it today. Use it, make today the day you're going to wear it. You know, don't, don't do it. Don't do it the other way around. So that's kind of where I feel about this, where I was like, I'm trying to talk myself into it. Actually, I was going to do a Manhattan the other night, but it was, it ended up being, I have this thing lately where I'm like, 
not lately. I was like this during the pandemic too, where if it gets past a certain time, I'm like, I'm not going to make the drink. Cause it's basically like, Oh, I know I'm going to fall asleep soon. And I don't want to, I don't want to like drink right before bed or something like that. You know, um, it's fine if it was like, you know, the weekend or something, but I mean, it was the weekend, so I don't know why I didn't do it, but I was going to do a Manhattan with the boxer grail I have from rabbit hole. Um, but I also have rabbit hole gin there, which is, I, I keep it. That's like a really hard to get gin. So I'm very specific. Like I don't basically, I haven't had it since I had it. I opened it and shared it with a bunch, you know, with friends to try it and stuff. And so I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to use it till I have a drink, but they had made a drink at rabbit hole called the velveteen. And it's like the best, one of the best cocktails I've ever had, but it had the boxer grail. It, so it had the rye, it had the gin in it and it had some, um, some other thing, this like shrub that was, um, that was not saffron, not, not rosemary. Was it rosemary? I don't, I don't think it was rosemary because I don't really like when people use those in drinks, but, um, I can't remember. It had another ingredient in there. It, oh, it was, um, it was thyme, thyme. It was like lemon thyme, like shrub or a tincture. Um, so it was like a, like a, almost like a syrup thing. Um, but so it's like, it's one of those things where you're like, okay, I don't have the ingredients to make that drink the way it deserves to be made. Um, but I was thinking, you know, it's funny, Patrick's bringing up tequila in here, tequila old fashions. Yeah, I've done that before where it's like the tequila mezcal and you use agave. I literally have agave downstairs because of that. And, um, you know, then I mean, I would use like orange bitters in that or something like that. But, um, and then, maybe do like a lime instead of the orange, or you could do the orange still too. But um, no, I, I like to do that. I saw something where someone was like, do a gin old fashioned. Um, but I feel like people always use, uh, lately it's like, what's the liquor? Elderflower. And I'm just like, it's exhausting. I feel like I don't really like elderflower, but it seems to be there's the hot, like use that liquor and everything lately. And I'm like, I don't, mm, mm. It's not for me. It's too flowery. I don't like it. Um, I do have this other liquor down there that I do feel like goes well with gin, and it does work well in bourbon, which is called Italicus, and that is sort of like a very herbal, um, I think it's like an Italian liquor sort of a thing. It's definitely, I think it's technically in the family of like, or maybe not the family, but it's like a cousin of like, uh, if you think about like Chinar or um, Amaro or Aperol, it's like a sweeter version of those because I don't like any of those things I just named. Uh, Aperol spritz, if you use the perfectly balanced one, sure, but Aperol is usually like, I don't like it. It's too bitter. It's not my thing. Um, what is in a black Manhattan? I think I just had a black Manhattan somewhere recently. Trey's using that bourbon finished gin. Um, yeah, the rabbit hole gin is gin finished in a bourbon barrel. Um, oh, what was the name of the bourbon drink with the mezcal and dragon fruit that I did? It was called the Bourbon Rita. The Bourbon Rita. The Bourbon... The Burberita. And uh, I did that on the Ampliverse YouTube channel. And... Um, it's good. Uh, you need to get some, like, Monin Dragon fruit simple syrup though because i tried to do dragon fruit simple syrup myself and it just didn't have that punch it needed but that that was really good it was like this smoky sweet bourbon margarita and it was just like it was so good it's one of the best drinks and then like with that little bit of salt in there to give it that pop oh my god it's so good um i don't know if i've had a french martini what makes a martini french kissin Ooh, rum finished in mezcal barrels. That sounds really interesting. I bet that was a really smoky rum. I like that. I don't have like a bottle of mezcal. I basically have, uh, um, it's not Tavor, Flaviar. It was this like liquor subscription thing I did for a while. I don't know if I really recommend it. I don't really think you're getting a deal out of it or anything really special, but they would send you like these sampler things and uh, <laughs> croissant on the side, funny. Um, 
And so I had one that was like all mezcal. So I still have like one left. I might have just used the last one actually. Um, so I've definitely got to get mezcal. I need to get tequila because I don't have any tequila here. I love a margarita, but I definitely, the older I'm getting, the more I feel like a margarita sits on me a little bit more. Like it, feel, it makes me feel immediately like a little bit heavy. So it's one of those things where like, I want to make the margarita because I feel like people use too much sweet and sour or they'll use like artificial sweet and sour. Where I'm like, I'd rather they just use lemon and lime juice and uh, like fresh lemon and lime juice because that'll definitely keep it a lot lighter. Um, but yeah, I don't know. But mm. my, friend, my, my friend, Kim makes me really good uh, gin martinis whenever I go to her house. I like those too. It's like a, nice, like a classy drink, but. Sometimes I like a complex cocktail too, you know. I've got um, I've got these two, the two books, the Death and Company Cocktail Codex, and then the Death and Company Bar Book, and I read through those sometimes, and then I'll, I'll get inspired, and then sometimes I might, my friend Brian, he always makes me whenever they have a party, uh, him with Brian and TJ, whenever they have a party, he's always like, okay, rhinos, because it's always what is everyone gonna bring, and I'm like, he does like a nice spread at his house and everything like that, and he's always like, I'm always in charge of the drink make it a drink, you know, and I always hate it. Uh, you know, that's the shitty thing is like, um, this last time, cause it was TJ's birthday. I did, um, I brought and I left it. There was a, there was a birthday cake bourbon. So it's not bourbon. Technically it's whiskey when it becomes flavored. Um, and then I did, um, there was also a cookie dough one I did cause I had had it somewhere and it was like really good. Um, but I definitely did not create, recreate it very well. Um, there's a restaurant in Orlando called The Pinery, and it was there. And uh, so I tried to do these, these old fashions where it would be like, so you do like a shot of the cookie dough or a shot of the birthday cake, and then a shot of regular bourbon. So that gets you your two ounces. And then you would do like chocolate bitters, or I had these like cherry vanilla bark bitter, bitters or um, spice cherry bitters. And then um, I had... Um, I had like a little bit of toasted marshmallow simple syrup and then there was like regular simple and um, I had like brought gingerbread with me, but I didn't end up doing the gingerbread one just because that gingerbread syrup I have is very heavy on the ginger, not the spice because I thought the spice would lend itself to the cake. But anyway, then I did a little, um, I did a little, uh, what's it called? Side, the thing, like the decorative thing you put in it. You know, it'll be a cherry or an orange or whatever. It was Munchkins. It was the donuts from Dunkin' Donuts. So it was my little accompaniment. I, accoutrement? I can't... I don't know the word. I, I've lost the word right now. I'm having a, having a moment. Mezcal, sparkling water, and a tiny splash of pineapple. That sounds nice. Mm -mm -mm. Oh! Yep, he's doing hot chocolate with peppermint vodka for the drink of the night. I love it. Now, you see, my thing is like peppermint, that's any time of year, baby. That does not have to stick to the, the holiday season. I love a peppermint. You, you leave them with fresh breath no matter what. What other podcasts am I going on? Um, So my friend Carrie and her friend H. Allen Scott... Um, they've been doing this Golden Girls podcast called uh, called Out on the Lanai for like years and years and years. Allison Garnish, thank God, thank you. I I was gonna like it was it was like an itch in my brain that I could not remember the name of it. Um, uh, so they do this podcast called Out on the Lanai, and it was like a Golden Girls rewatch podcast. And they are definitely like very early on in the beginning of this like rewatch podcast thing. I'm talking like a decade ago, maybe. Um, and, uh, they've been like revisiting some of the stuff. And so they want me to go on and talk about the episode where the girls go to, uh, Disney. Cause they're not really at Disney though. So I don't know how I'm going to contribute to this, but it's Carrie. And when Carrie asks me to do something, I do it. So, um, that would be the podcast I'm going on. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that later this week. I've got water over here. So I'm doing one sip of the water, one sip of the beer. Um, this brewery called Dead Words Brewing that is literally like, a, you know, it's like less than 10 minutes from where I live is definitely in a not great part of town. Um, it's permanently closing, which sucks because like this brewery had some like 
delicious pizza. They had these, they call them Neo dough um, bites. So it's basically like cheese curds baked inside of like pizza crust with like a sauce dip. And it, oh my God, so good. So good. They're closing in like two weeks. And I, I went again this weekend. I'd gone last weekend, but they had gotten this weekend two more beers of theirs came back on, or three of their beers came back on tap. So they had Timberline, which was like a very piney, like West Coast IPA. Um, that was on tap. Um, and then they had one called Epilogue and one called Finn. And one of those was a hazy IPA. And the other one was uh, a Pina Colada IPA. And they were all delicious. And I went there and then I I got one of their pizzas. It was called Abomination. And it was like a Cuban sandwich inspired pizza. Girl, this thing was good. This was good. Uh, and um, I'm going to miss this place. I mean, it was in the shittiest part of town. Like, I'm talking there was a lot of go-go places around it. A lot of topless dancer places around it and stuff. And it's hard to be like, no, trust me. Once we get to this place, you're going to be like, oh, wow. It's like this weird light in the dark. And like, I think they must have bought in there or been sold on that place on the idea that that area of town was going to get a little more like gentrified or modernized or, you know, like redone because it definitely needs it. Um, and nothing really came to fruition with that. And it's crazy because it's like two streets over from the from the uh, soccer stadium and you know, the investment in soccer in Orlando is crazy. Uh, so it's just one of those where it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's tough. Um, it's sad cause they made really good beer and they had delicious food and their space was beautiful. Um, but yeah. Yeah. JVR it's called out in the Lanai. <laughs> you definitely check it out. Uh, what's my favorite area in Orlando that I'm interested in living in? Okay. So there's an area when, first of all, winter garden, but you have to be careful because it's not all Winter Garden. There's like one part of Winter Garden that is still a little down in the dumps. Um, but it would be the like Horizon West area, like the um, the uh, um, it's called Independence is the one specific neighborhood that would be the ideal location. But anywhere like kind of right around that. So um, it's hard because they keep renaming each itself. So like right down the street, there's like this Waterly watermark area and over there is really nice too. And I looked at a place there. Um, but there's an area in winter garden. That's like one more exit up from that. That's called, um, Stony Brook. And it's like a, um, they have like a golf course in the community. I was like, I don't care about that. But, uh, it, it was just like a really cool setup of a house. It's a really nice neighborhood. And it was literally like just off to the side where you'd be like everything, every restaurant, everything, the amenity that you would ever want is right there. But then you get to live in this like neighborhood and it was a nice neighborhood. And this is the second time I've tried to get a house in that neighborhood. And it literally is one street over from where I put a, a bid on a house in 2020. And this one was like 150 more than that one now but it was not like a bigger house it was basically just like that's where we're at and it's just like ugh. so um ideally there um i'm not anti-celebration i like celebration i don't like any of the outside areas outside of celebration but celebration is also like it's very expensive but in the thing with like independence or the Stony stonebrook area i'm talking about is like there's more things to do there but i like celebration too but um yeah, basically, that's my, like, end-all, be-all, very specific honed-in area where I'm, like, I don't really want to settle for anywhere else. Because it's also, for me, it's, like, the investment of being, like, okay, the property value is probably not going to drop. And if it does drop, it's still, like, it's still, um, even if it drops, like, 50000 in the next two years, you're, like, okay, well, this year alone, did I not pay, like, $25,000 in rent? So it's like, okay, well, then that's just rent I paid that disappeared. Like, that's what I've been doing for 12 years in the place I've lived in. So I'm just ready to be like, mentally, I'm like, okay, move the money out of the bank account into a house. And that house technically becomes the bank account. And then the money I'm paying every month, that is my rent. And so for me, it's like money that's going nowhere that someday, all of a sudden you'd be like, oh, you own this. You know what I mean? It's one of those. Um... I don't hate Hunter's Creek. Hunter's Creek is actually nice. I looked at places in there. Um, uh, I, I, I think they've got a lot of really good restaurants. And again, that's another place where you'd never really have to go too far out of the area. You can get to Disney without getting on a highway. 
um, you know, or without getting on I-4, I should say. I think you still have to get on a highway. I think you have to do like 417 or something like that. But it's better than going on I-4. Um, so I don't, I don't think Hunter's Creek is really a bad option. But, yeah. Weymouth has a brewery called Barrel House X. I think you would like it. Okay. I didn't know that. I'll check that out next time I'm home because um, I like to check out the breweries. I still haven't been to the Carver, Carver, Massachusetts brewery that took over my favorite Chinese food restaurant. Um, oh, thank you, Corey. I appreciate that very much. Sending positive vibes for you to find a place in your desired neighborhood. It's tough, man. It, it's crazy. Like one of the, one of the, um, like literally a place I was looking at renting. And the reason why I switched from being like, okay, I think it's serious about getting buying again is that the rent for this place was a mortgage payment. Like it, it was at that where I was like, it was almost right at the mortgage payment. And I was like, okay, this house, like, why would I do this now for another year and not just buy it, you know? And I, you know, it was just one of those. And it was like, there was somebody in the house before me and somebody in the house right after me. And then that happened at another two other houses. I went to view and I was just like, Oh my God. Um, so it is still hard. It is still like very much people chomping at the bit to buy places. So it's crazy. Um, and that's the thing, Mark, you're, you're saying it right. O owning a property is great because of the equity, because I feel like in order to accrue any sort of wealth in the United States of America or, you know, move forward or up a ladder is you have to own property um, because then you can, you know, you have that, you have that equity, you have that thing to borrow against now. And once you're in, I think you're in, you know, like you you have it, you can eventually buy a newer place or a smaller place or, you know, a different place or something like that. I feel like it becomes a little bit easier than somebody who's not in yet. So you're just like, oh, I have never been to Discovery Cove, actually. No, I know that that's a question in here. Um, yeah, homeowners insurance in Florida is very expensive. And in fact, it's like almost impossible to get now. Um, Cassandra saying I live in Champions Gate Davenport for a while and it was a very nice area. Yeah, my friend, um, my friends, uh, live in, in Davenport and their, their lake area works. They live in a nice neighborhood. Um, and it's good for them and stuff like that. My thing is I definitely am trying to treat it a little bit like an investment property because I don't want to live in Florida forever, but I do, but I want, so I want the property to be, I know it's insane, like with a certain minute distance of the Disney parks. Cause then there will always be employees of that park. There will always be, you know, these people who need to rent, you know, or want a vacation or thing like that. So it's like, and also I think the closer you are to the parks here, at least, I know this isn't, I mean, it's true in California too, I think, but is the, your property, however in disarray it may become is still not going to bottom out completely because you're so near to this kind of permanent installation that everybody always is going to kind of want to go to. Although if you ask my mother, she said to me on the other day on the phone, she's like, I don't think so. You don't know that Disney's always going to be around. And I was like, don't you, you turn that Fox news off young lady. But yeah, Diane is right. Florida is crazy expensive. Cause here's the thing. It was like nearing the price of being like, okay, this we're at the price level where I'm like, this is a house in Massachusetts which would have a yard, like an actual yard, like the kind I grew up on, not these like teeny tiny Florida strips of grass. And that's sort of the thing where it's like, oh, I don't know. I'm with you, Jay. I think that's ultimately what I want to do. I want to do snowboarding. I, I'd like to be able to have at least one other place to go, you know, and be like, okay, for, you know, the summer, we're going to go here and then a little bit back and forth somewhere else or something like that. But, um, I'm not saying you're wrong, but you have to think about the costs involved to maintain it along with the mortgage costs. Yeah. I don't know what that is in relation to, but obviously. Um, but, um, yeah. So this is a part of me where I'm like, listen, I'd like to buy a place in Milwaukee, but it has to be right in, like, Kim's neighborhood. And the problem with that is, well, one, her neighborhood is very sought after, but their population isn't isn't growing it's just staying the same so like their housing market isn't like out of control so like nobody's really selling and you know um and so it's i mean they're selling but it's like not where you want and then i don't know also it's like well we're just gonna go live with her <laughs> like um 
sorry, I got a text message. People love to message you. Not, it, not a text message. I should have said something else, but um, anyway, anyway, anyway. Okay. Okay, JVR says, I'm in insurance and I can tell you that homeowner's insurance has gone insane everywhere, but the entire industry tells horror stories about homeowner's insurance in Florida. It's insane. Yeah, I was reading an article the other day where they were basically like a lot of major companies are like pulling out completely and it's become one of those things or like you have to do very specific things to be able to get it now and it, or it's like insane and it, it, I, I'm i like, I don't, I don't, that's scary. Um, Katie is telling me Milwaukee is ready whenever you want to make the move. I know. I know. My friend is in Bayview, um, which is nice. Uh, and then there were some people I had met when I was there who came from Boston, um, and ended up in an area that's like a little bit closer to the water and it's like a newer area. I think it might be cut a, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah. I'm trying to convince Mike we need a winter home. Yeah, well, Jay, put him through a couple more ice storms, and I think maybe he'll change his mind. But um, oh, Jennifer's saying Discovery Clothes is an amazing, all inclusive food, snacks, wetsuits, drinks included, some alcohol, so swim with the dolphins. So I might have to do that at some point for sure. Um, hold on, let me see. I was gonna pull up, pull up this. Apple, I have you guys here. The Zillow. And I know not everybody lists on Zillow, but it's at that point where I'm like, if you don't list on Zillow, do you even list? Um, ugh, there's some trash house. The, you know, the crazy part too is like, it's we. I think like my brain is a little bit conditioned now. Um, to that uh like a lot of properties in florida aren't that old that they're all very like built built in like 1996 you know 2007 2008 a lot of them are those that area of time and um it's wild to me to then look at somewhere like milwaukee because i'll look at it you know every probably once a week at least more than that um, and I'm like, oh, this house is 102 years old. This house is, you know, like it's just, and it's the thing that's funny about Milwaukee is it's like, it kind of, it reminds me a little bit of New England, but then it like, it is similar, like house and yard shape and size and diff it's like Florida like that. But, um, what I love about the, the, the Wisconsin, houses the milwaukee houses specifically is that everybody's house most of the house is there and i shouldn't say everybody a lot of the houses there um is uh oh disposable rest says i live in milwaukee and housing is odd here for sure i'm lucky and own a house in a decent area yeah well that's the problem too it's like right you're on the wrong side of the city it's a problem but um Kat, I think that's exactly what you, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in that a hundred percent. If we get the go ahead dog on, I will probably move in the thing. The thing is, it's like my mom basically was like, do that too. But it's, you know, um, would I move back to Massachusetts again? A hundred percent, except for the property taxes in Massachusetts are insane. Um, but no, I would, I, I love Massachusetts. Um, you know, I thought about Rhode Island a little bit. I thought maybe Vermont, I know it's quieter and there's not a lot going on, but it's, it's so I, I, I want, I kind of want to be somewhere there where there's community though and i will say that is that like i really i want to I, I gauge it by like what's halloween like here are there a lot of trick-or-treaters you know what i mean something like that um i uh what i love about a lot of the houses in milwaukee is that not only do they have those basements those finished basements but a lot of times they have bars like full full-on bars in the basement and i was like this is what i want because i in my head i'm like perfect i got a little filming studio little entertaining area like i love that and i don't think they usually count it in the square footage I, i'm not sure the rule for when they can count it but um but yeah it's it's one of those where it's crazy there's this one house that's been on here for i don't even know how long i can't i don't think it's listed on here because you know usually they'll be like on zillow for 30 days or whatever um but there's this one and i know where this house is because i pass it every time i'm there it's literally they have 
not one foot of yard. It's like this house was literally picked up, put on a sidewalk, and it's not, it, it's a, I mean, it's a 1,300, 1,351 square foot house, three bedrooms, two bathroom. It is now down to 350,000. It was way more than that before. But literally, the side wall of their house is the parking lot for this gas station, for this mobile gas station. And I was like, I, I don't think you're going to sell this house for $350,000. I mean, the inside is beautiful. It's like newly renovated. And it, Milwaukee, ha the houses in Milwaukee have weird kitchens, a lot of them, like very small kitchens. This one has a nice long kitchen, big kitchen counter. You know what I mean? The the bathrooms look nice. Everything looks like really like redid. The floor, the upstairs is like one giant room, which is cool. Um, like it is beautiful inside, but I'm like, it's right next to a gas station. I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. You know what I mean? Um, but I do, I do think, I do think about Rhode Island a lot as a thing. I look there, and it's it's tough because you, Rhode Island's another one of those things, right? You could end up in different types of pockets, and it's like. I'm like a interesting looking house. Um, you know, obviously I'll never afford, uh, I'll never afford like, um, what does my mom want? My mom was like, oh, go to look in, um, oh my God, where's the big 4th of July parade? Bristol. And I was like, Bristol's nice. You can, you can walk to, hold on, Bristol, Rhode Island, let's look. You can, yeah, there's literally, like, I have it set for, what do I have it set at? Because I was like, I'll see prices, houses way out of my price zone, and then see if they drop. 500000 and there's not a single house available there. But then now I've seen that Warren, Rhode Island, is a, is becoming a place or whatever. And this one's like a three-bedroom, two-bathroom, 1680, and it's got a yard. Actually, this is a very pretty house. 469 900 this is a huge yard this yard is gigantic actually i think i looked at this house before you got a finished basement what do you got down in that basement for me then there's because the, there's the part of me there's the heavier set part of me that's like okay oh this is a finished basement too well i hope those are hisses of excitement um man take a better photo you're like fence is effed in this um i uh i just lost my train of thought i i lost it it's gone it's gone baby nope hideous nope hideous nope hideous no ah. 499 five bedrooms two bathrooms three thousand one hundred fifty square square feet who died here and it's got a little circle area. This house is haunted for sure. Old cabinets, old appliances. Oh, yeah. Dirty rug. Oh, green rug? No, girl. Oh, there's a there's a door that opens to a closet? No. Or, or that opens to a staircase? No, ma'am. Central air. That's what I was saying. Sorry. That's what I was losing my train of thought on is that there's the heavier set part of me that's like, a lot of these older houses, some of them do get and get, end up getting central air, but like, I need to make sure that the heating and the air conditioning is central air. I'm that guy. I got things, you know. Um, Diane says, "Just a reminder, you got a shovel." No, that's what you pay people for. No, <laughs> but I do. No, I actually, um, you know, I shoveled my whole life. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I think we just live in a different time now than I did before. Um, oh, yeah. Katie was saying the West Dallas. I did look in West Dallas because I was like, I know that area, too, in Wisconsin. Um, I, what was I saying? Shoveling. Something about shoveling I was going to bring up. I like being cold. That's the thing, you know? I'm like, I'm not... I'm not saying like like down to the bone freezing, but you know, mm, I like it. Oh, this one's a nice one in West Dallas. Fenced in yard. Oh, this is a big yard too. Oh, it's got a fire pit outside. Do we have a basement? All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick listings. Oh, it's got a basement. 
a finished basement, carpeted finished basement, built bar, built in bar, but still plenty of space for, oh my god, it's a wet bar downstairs. It's got a washing machine down here. A full bathroom in the basement with a huge tub? Excuse me? Holy, oh my god, and look at this outdoor entertaining area. Okay. Hold on, I'm gonna, I can't, can I, I think I can add this into the chat, right? Hold on. You know what I'll do? I'm going to text it to myself, and then I'll paste it, and then I'll put it in the chat. And I think I can do it like that. Um, West Geraldine Place. Three bedrooms, three bathrooms. Okay. Hold on. This place actually looks really nice. Um... Okay, here's what we're gonna do as a group. All of us, um, as collectively as a group, we're gonna we're gonna decide on a property, and we're gonna buy it together. Okay, I'll start the uh, PayPal or the Venmo. Okay, so I think I added it in there. You should be able to click on that link here just to look at the one I just looked at. Um, tell me this is not pretty. Okay, obviously the wall color on the inside that needs to be changed. Yes. Um, you know what I mean? But the basement, the thing they did in the basement, like, oh, that's a studio right there. Honey, that's a studio. That's a, oh my God, it's, it's two rooms in the basement. There's a gym in the basement. <sighs> no, I love a basement because they're quiet. Um, wow, that is the ultimate entertaining space because I like to entertain people. I want to entertain I want that community feeling. I want to be like, okay, neighbors, come on over. Well, if I like you. Um, we're going to do it together. We're going to do a thing. We'll pick a property together, and we will... Um, how about we do... We'll do a thing where we'll all contribute, and then it, it'll be like when, um, when places... Like when breweries open and they're like, okay, everybody who contributes a thousand, you're part of the, you're part of the uh, owners club or whatever. And then so um, we'll have rights to it. You know what I mean? So that basement right there, you can see. Um, so it'll be, yeah, Brian has a group home. <laughs> and um, everyone's invited. So everyone becomes partial owners, um, you know, or investors, we should say. We shouldn't say owners. We should say investors. And, um, you know, and we do, uh, so you buy in. So what we'll do when we do that, like this place I just did here. We'll have a we'll have seasonal gatherings. So we'll do a springtime, we'll do a summertime, we'll do a fall. Obviously, we're not missing Halloween. We'll do a we'll do a fall gala, a Halloween thing, and then we'll do like a little Christmas thing. So four times a year, we'll do a we'll do like a party. We'll make it like our own Club Thirty Three, and um, you know, so we can buy in and uh, whatever Airbnbs there are, whatever you know, we'll we'll figure all that out so everybody can come and stay and be comfortable. You know, our top tier get the basement, whoever they are. You know, but we'll do like a gala and, um, you know, we'll have we'll have these like weekends. So it won't just be like one night. It'll be like an event. So we'll do like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, almost like a convention. And then we'll go and we'll do, you know, Halloween, we can go do ghost tours together. We can do, um, you know, bar crawls. We can do, um, but then we'll do stuff for charity too. So we'll do like an art festival. So, you know, I'll do a bunch of paintings, you know, and, and proceeds can go to this stuff, you know. So we'll use it as like that sort of community center. So that's what we'll do together. But then I get to live there. <laughs> um, you know, don't have to live there all year. So here's the thing. What if we did something like that? And I just, we use it like our own little... Um, yeah, it's our own club. We'll make it our own Club 33, and um, we'll call it Club 85, because I was born in 1985. And um, what we'll do is we'll just sign it out. It'll be like our own version of a... It'll be a, a micro version of... Uh, of um, what am I thinking of? A timeshare, like sort of a thing or whatever. But you know what I said? Like, we'll make sure we set those weekends. We set them all out ahead of time you know, to pick the best weekends. We'll lock those in and then we'll get the events involved and we'll have like restaurants to go to. So we'll, we'll, you know, we'll do like catered events and everything like that. Um, and then, you know, it can be a thing where like, I don't have to live there all the time. I'll just live there sometimes, you know, um, it can be a retreat, but then we like could do a thing where we're like, Oh, okay. So the summer retreat, you know, there's going to be, you know, 10 people, you know, can sign up to stay there. 
and then everybody else can be in surrounding areas, but we'll, so we'll all come together for the events, but there'll be like special events for the people that stay there. I'm just saying. Diane's saying like a DVC, exactly, yeah. Uh, oh, Angie, okay, Angie can tell, speak about the neighborhood. She says the house is about a mile from them. <laughs> Katie agrees, the house is amazing. Um, I'm just saying. Yeah, Diane, okay, so Diane's got the great idea here. She says, so since we're all over the U.S., can't we just do this now and we can all rotate home? Well, I can't do it. I don't have a house yet. But if I were to do the Florida one, that's how we could pick and choose. But we'll all make it like the holiday. It'll just be different times of year. The RVC, Rhino's Vacation Club. Yeah, Tracy. Um, his name is Rhino, and he's born in 1985. Is that a Taylor Swift reference? <laughs> My name is Taylor, and I was born in 1989. Um, yeah, what's the Patreon tier for that? I think that's our top, that's our that's our diamond tier. I think you have to be a $1,000 a month supporter. <laughs> you have to pay the mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think sometimes I'm like... If I was like a Mr. Beast type, like if I was bringing in that sort of money and doing that sort of a thing like he does, I would do this. I'm not even kidding. Like I would pick these neighborhoods where there are people I love. Like I would I would do something West Coast, you know, um, I would do something there and I would do something in New England and I'd do something here. I would do like the four. And then maybe if we got crazy, maybe I'd do something in Austin where my friend lives and and like rotate through it and just be like, OK, like do these events, like these things, and just figure out how we can aim it where, because for me, it's all about, we create this sense of community that we have here on the YouTube channel. I like the community of the chat. I like the community. Um, but you know, whenever I've looked at anywhere to get a house, I'm always, I ask that question. I'm like, what is it like on Halloween? Because I think places that have a lot of trick-or-treaters, a lot of things like that, those usually have really good um, community. Like, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so, like, whatever we do in these places, if we buy this property, I want it to be something where it's an investment in that community. So, um, but, you know, we need to do it, obviously, an investment in the community, um, the regular community, the housing community, the stuff there. But we need to invest in the people who need the help in the community, you know, underprivileged, you know, um, underprivileged communities, underrepresented communities, like, you know, um, stuff aimed at, like, you know, um, kids suffering through poverty, you know, like women, people of color, like that sort of, you know, I, I want to create like community centers around, around, I wanted the Ampliverse as like an online community center. And I wanted that to be like, uh, someday there's an actual physical one, but, um, no, Diane, the whole point is to buy a house. We have to use it because it's a shared space. I can't create a, uh, I can't create a um, commune without the property. <laughs> we saw this six-bedroom house, and it was fancy. John and I decided that it should be, it should be me, him, Rhino, Raffi, and we need two other servants. <laughs> I do like Salem. Just give me a second. Sorry. One second. I'm sorry. I it just I didn't want to talk for a few minutes here. Um, I am there's a sorry. Um, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, um, yeah, I just need a goddamn house that has four walls and a door in it, so I can close the door and not have to constantly worry about 
just the the uh, the surrounding environment and just be able to exist and do what I want to do for a few minutes each day, um, uninterrupted and uninhibited and just the way it should be done. But that is that. Yeah. Should we start playing lottery together? Michelle brings a really good point. <laughs> no. Um, I, I, uh, no, I appreciate it. It's just dreams. You know what I mean? It's all that, it's all that, uh, daydream stuff. Sorry about that pause there. It was just one of those things. Like I don't have, uh, four walls here. As you may have seen, I have an open air loft and so, uh, and no door to close. So I don't like doing this. Um, I don't like doing this when there's stuff going on in this apartment. So, um, I do appreciate all of you and, uh, all of your support and daydreaming with me and everything like that. And uh, if I do win the lottery, I should put it down here, depending on the amount. I should say that because like if I win the lottery and I end up with $20,000, that's not really going to help anybody <laughs> because I have to pay off my student loans. Um, but I, I would say that, uh, you know, let's say I win like $2 million or something like that, you know, which still, you know, you really come down to think about it. Like, yeah, it's a lot of money, but it can be spent almost immediately because you're like, okay, get those $80,000 student loans. Then you buy a $500,000 house and you're like, okay, well, that's like, we're nearing a million right there. Um, so it's one of those things where it's like, uh, yeah, but um, I just, it's one of those things where I think I would do something like that. You know, I think it would be fun. I, I'd like, you know, a property or something like that where you could do something like I was that, that sort of dream where, um, you know, you bring people in instead of keeping them out and that sort of thing. So I don't know. It's, just, you know, and, and, and I'd like to be that sort of rich person, I guess, who has those sort of fundraisers where the money actually goes to help somebody or something, you know, like I said, investing in these communities. So wherever you go and wherever you do this, you invest in that. And then, you know, like maybe it's a thing where like, okay, so if we've got that house and we do that for whatever, and then when we go to like, like, okay, we're not going to do it here anymore. Okay. Well, you know what, instead of if the money doesn't need to be made, you know, make just the money back that we put in, but set somebody up for, you know, who needs it, you know, give somebody else that random leg up. Um, because like we talked about earlier, sometimes it's really just that barrier of getting into that, like ownership to be able to get that equity, to be able to be in this game, because sadly, like it, it really comes down to that. Like you have nothing to borrow against. You have nothing, you know, and it, it could change so many people's lives. Um, and it's just a system we have built here and it's wild and crazy. And, um, you know, if we could, if we could start creating these little estates around everywhere, that would, uh, I think that would be really cool. Anyway, that's just a daydream. So, um, who knows though? Maybe it's, maybe it's already been done. I was going to say, maybe we could be the first, um, house that YouTube built, you know, uh, that YouTube bought. And it's just one of those wild things where I think like, I don't think about it in a, in a, in a selfish way. I, mean, I should say it in a selfish way. Okay. So on Instagram, I think there's like, I've like, 7,000 subscribers, maybe not a brag, just a statement, you know, and it's one of those things where there's some parts of my brain where I'm like, if everybody donated $10, well, and then I paid the in-between, you know, the, the next 12, I'd be like, student loans are gone and it would change my life. And I'm like, okay, but like Instagram, I have, um, 24,000 people. I don't know how many people I have. Not, and again, it's not related to that, but it's okay. 24,000 is what it tells me right now. So I was like, okay, if everybody on Instagram gave me $3 and I paid the rest off, I was like, I could do it. And then be like, loans are cleared. And then, you know what I mean? Like, so every now and then I see some things like that and I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to contribute to that person's thing. You know, it's just a weird thing where I was like, I guess they're all just pyramid schemes, right? But um, I'm not saying for me, I'm just saying my brain rationalizes it using the information I know. So I know I have $82,000 in student loan debt. And I think to myself, okay, well, there are 24,000 people that are following you for some reason or another. How many of those are real? And you're like, okay, 20,000 of those people, two, four, six, eight. Okay. If everybody agreed and said, we'll give you $4 and you're like, $4 is nothing. But if everybody gave me $4, you're like student loan debt is gone. And sometimes it's like, okay, I think. I don't, in another life, or maybe later in life, you know, once I get myself figured out, do we ever figure ourselves out? Maybe I, I want to be able to set things up like that, that are like a low investment for people that are kind of like, I, I want to call it like pocket change or something like that. 
And it's just literally like the roundup on the dollar, but you're not doing it as a corporation. You're doing it as just like regular people who have like change jars, you know, or something like that. And being like, okay, we're going to go, we're going to do this together and we're going to change somebody's life and do it together. You know, I, I wanted to do it during the pandemic because I had seen a woman who was doing it and I wanted to do it when I went to like Disney um, or anywhere I felt comfortable. Um, I wanted to do that thing where like, you know, I'd, uh, I'd go to like a restaurant or a bar, um, you know, when I was doing like the outdoor seating and stuff and just like order the beer, pay for the beer, pay for that tip, but then be like, okay, everybody on here, you know, Venmo me a dollar, um, you know, or PayPal me a dollar or whatever um, in, um, in the next 24 hours. And um, in whatever people put in, I would, I would, you know, I'd make sure to take screenshots and all that sort of stuff. I'd pull it out of that account and then give it to that server, you know, just the random person that you picked who was nice. You know, well, obviously they'd have to be nice. I'm not going to give it to somebody who's like, oh yeah, and spits in the beer. Maybe I will. I don't know. You know, um, but it's like somebody where you're like, I, I just love that idea of being able to like surprise people with that sort of a thing. Not, not just surprise people, but really those people who show up, those people who are there every day, you know, those people who are, I'm sure going through it, who, you know, are kind of maybe getting the, the, the short end of the stick, the shit end of the stick. Like it's, it's like, I think it would be cool. It's one of those things where I'm like, I wish more people who are millionaires or billionaires, like I wish they were doing stuff like this, just walking through life and changing those little people's life. Cause for them, it's like a couple hours of work and that's it. You know what I mean? They literally, they could do it for like 20 people a day and it would be like nothing out of their thing. And so I was like, someday I want to do something like that. You know what I mean? And we'll call it, you know, we can all be a part of that like spare change club or something like that. I don't know. I just, you know, just brainstorming dreams. Someday I'll be organizing stuff. I think I'll do that when I have, when I have moved on into whatever this next phase of life. That sounds like I'm dying. Whenever, whatever I've like solidified everything a little bit more, you know, once I'm like moved um, out of here. I mean, the thing is, it's not, a, it doesn't take an investment for me. It literally just takes the organization of creating the link and being like, here's what I'm going to do. And then creating that sense of, uh, that relationship of trust, you know, obviously, so, you know, I'm not just running away with like, you know, let's say we made like $300 making sure I'm just not running away with it, you know, and using it exactly for what it says. So you, so I feel like the more you do it, the more trust you build in, in your community. But then, you know, I don't know. It seems like a nice, seems like a really nice thing to kind of do that. I, I feel like a lot of us could do that. But then maybe that's my hope is that some people will see it. It's not about me getting clout or um, more followers or anything like that. It's more about spreading that idea um, where more people can um, be inspired by it to do it in other areas of where they are. You know what I mean? And and sometimes it, you're just the spark that lights the, you know, the, 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 the dynamite, you know, that, you know, so you might be the original spark, but it, it's got to travel up that thing until it hits the dynamite. So I don't know. It's kind of that pay it forward aspect of, of life. I, I did it when I was younger. I had seen, I think I'd seen pay it forward, but I think I told this story before, but there was a, there was a freak storm in, in our, in the town I grew up in, in like November or something like that with like lightning and there was hail and it was insane. And this one strike of lightning, like I remember I was out, like I saw it because I was getting out of my grandparents' car, going into the library, trying to book. And I, you could like feel it throughout the town. It was like there was an earthquake. Like you could hear it everywhere. It sounded like a bomb went off. And it was this lightning strike. And um, it had ripped through these people's house, like right through the middle of their house. And it had burned, like they lost everything. They lost all their Christmas presents. They had lost uh, their pet, unfortunately, their dog, their family dog was in a kennel and he died. Um, but they lost like photos, every, everything, everything. And my dog at that time, my dog growing up, Shelby, she had just given birth to this litter of puppies. And, um, you know, I can't remember how many there were, but my mom was, there was one that was like, took to me a little bit, you know, and, and I love Shelby so much. And, um, my mom was going to let me keep one for Christmas, you know, but I, well, so I had told my mom like one random day, cause I saw in the newspaper, like, I'm like, Oh my God, I didn't know these people at all. And I was like, mom, I, but the girl, the, her, her name was Sarah Morse. She was a grade below me. Um, grade below me or two grades below me. She was younger than me either way. But, um, I didn't even know who she was, you know? And I, but I read the story and I was just like, it's so sad. And I was like, mom, I was like, you know, we have, maybe we should think about, I'm like 12 years old too. Like 
maybe we should think about giving one of the puppies to these people. Like maybe we could call them and find out where they live. And, um, and I, you know, and my mom did, but my mom was like, you know, if we do this, one of the, the only dog left that wasn't spoken for is the one that is for you for Christmas. You know, and I was like, yeah, I was like, I, I know, you know, and it, it'll make me sad. But I was like, but I, they they lost their dog. And I, and I was just like, and I still have Shelby. And she was like, you know what I mean? When you have that love where you're like, I have this love and it's enough love. And it's like somebody needs it more. And, and so we like gave it to them. They ended up named, they called the dog Joy Clavin. And, um, and that dog lived to be like 14 years old. Um, unfortunately, Shelby passed very young, relatively young in 2004. Um, and she was, uh, she was young. She was like seven or eight right then there. And, uh, from rare kidney disease. But, um, the other dog lived a very full life, loved its whole life. And, um, you know, and then I ended up knowing, I ended up knowing her later in life, uh, the, the daughter, Sarah Morrison, and, and they were very nice. And they were just like, they were people where it was like, okay, this was all kind of meant to be. And, you know, it wasn't about being like, oh, this kid gave him the dog. And I was just like, no, we just, we just have to have it. So they have this, because for me, Shelby also came into my life on a Christmas. She was like, literally, I think it was like the guy my mom was dating had gotten her or something, but it was like my childhood dog died or my like young childhood dog had died in my, in, um, when I was in my beginning of sixth grade. So like September. And so like in December, which now as an adult, I, it was way too early, like way too soon. The puppy came in on Christmas. So like, this is this like miracle little puppy. And she took to me and it was just like this whole thing. And so it's just one of those things where I try to like, hold on to that where I was like, sometimes other people need that little thing, you know, and maybe it's not a little thing. Maybe it is a monumental thing, um, you know, and I think a lot of times we have a knee jerk reaction, especially when we're talking about like student loans or people's debts and things like that. And, you know, the knee jerk reaction is like, well, I did this and why can't you do this? And that, and it's like, everyone's circumstances in life are different. You know, what age did they do this in? What year did they do this in? You know what I mean? Like, all this stuff, like factors like that. So it's hard, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes it's like stopping ourselves and reframing where, where that is coming from. And like, why are we upset that this person's like this? You know, like, why are we upset that they're asking for help? You know what I mean? Why are we upset that it's like that? It's like, I just keep saying the same sentence over and over again, but it, it's sort of about being like, can we change somebody's life for the better? You know what I mean? And, and having faith in that aspect of it. I'm not talking like a religious faith. I'm talking like a faith in people and, you know, and just being like, if I bump the ball just a little bit for them, you know, or if I help them, it's like spotting somebody at the gym, right? Sometimes they, you know, it's maybe just guiding their hands up a little bit, no, seeing that they can do it themselves. And so, I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's like, I, I think about that and I think about it was just such a like an impulse decision that then I was like, no, this is the right thing to do. And we have to do it. And like, yeah, I'm, yeah, am I sad that I lost Shelby? But, it, you know, that other dog lived to be twice as old as her. And you know what? I know that dog was loved every day of its life and lived such a full life. So that dog was where that dog was supposed to be. And Shelby was where she was supposed to be with me every day until she died. And that's one of those things where it's like I buried her and that is like. So it's one of those where like, yes, I didn't have as much time with her, but it doesn't, it didn't take away, from, you know what I mean? That decision to give up that puppy. It's one of those where I was like, I would never take that back, you know? Um, and so it's just, it's one of those things. It's like, I don't know. It's hard. It's, it, 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 it's, I try to, sometimes I feel like I get stuck in a spiral of like bitterness and anger and frustration. And it's kind of like, okay. I thrive off of doing that sort of thing for others. So I am that person who will have like $200 in their bank account. But if I am with friends at a bar and they are people that I know, maybe that's less off than me, I will 100% be like, let me get that. I remember the first time it was like, it was my friend Mora and it was a friend, Ator. And um, I remember we were, we were having drinks at like a San Diego's, which I think they're out of business now. Um, 
and I was like, I paid the tab without them knowing. And it wasn't like a huge tab, but it was like a big tab for me. It was a big deal for me because I think it was like a hundred bucks at that time, you know, but it was one of those where it was like, I had gotten the manager, like I was, you know, a supervisor at Borders at that time. It started, And so it was like, and I was living at home. So I wasn't, I didn't have to like pay rent at that time. And I was like, and there's that little bit of puff for that one moment of my life. And it was like, yeah, I could have paid another bill. I could have made a thing, but I was like, but I wanted to do that nice thing for somebody else, you know, and just be like, push it. You gotta, sometimes it's like, you just gotta push it out in the universe. And I think it'll ripple. You know what I mean? Throw the rock in every now and then. And just be like, mm. it's, like, it's the same reason why it's like, I like to buy that thing for somebody, not because it's Christmas, not because it's a birthday, because you know you saw that thing that somebody's going to like. It's what I do with the paintings a lot of times. I end up, for my friends, where I'm like, okay. I was like, they'll say something, and I'll be like, okay, I've got an idea for a painting, and I'm going to surprise them with this painting. I'm like, you know, I don't know. It's like, that's that's the thing I know I can do without it costing, you know, um, something. And there's a cost related to everything, emotional, financial, whatever. Um, but that's my end, that's my end spiel for you all though, is to kind of think about maybe that, cause I'm going to do it too, you know, um, like us together. I mean, in terms of being like, is there something nice we could do for, maybe it's somebody we know, maybe it's somebody we don't know. Maybe it's like, you know, um, surprising somebody with like a gift card. I don't want it to all be money, but it's maybe just like that little extra thing. You know what I, you know what I mean? I don't know. I try, I try to. I try to be that thoughtful person where I go to do something and I might be like, oh, does this person need this thing too? And I'll just like get it for them and be like, oh, if they have it, they have it. I'll give it to somebody else, you know? Um, it's like my friend, my friend's kids, I gave them some of these like old Power Ranger chapter books I had and they've never seen Power Ranger, they don't know anything about it. And they are reading these books like crazy. And it, the thing I like to do is because I know her and her husband are both cast members and it's like, you know, I, they've got their life together. They have a house. They have, you know, they're, you know, but I still also know she kind of came from somebody like me. And so it's like that thing where I'm like, you know what? I want to do. So I like ordered them some old McDonald's Power Ranger toys from eBay um, for the kids to play dress up. And we're going to make costumes and stuff. And it's like, you know, I want to get them a couple other things. Like my friend just moved and I'm trying, I've sent his kids some stuff. And so it's like that thing. I just like to be, like have those little surprises for them because you know, they appreciate it, you know? So it's like, kind of maybe like think about doing stuff like that for for those random things those random acts of kindness like diane says in here um uh okay so let me let me tell you one last thing before i go because this is kind of something that happened to me there was these like three kids that are playing in the parking lot out here and i'm like you know what? it kind of makes me sad because i'm like this is this kid's playground it's like this parking lot that is filled with trash and glass and just like no one respects it. And I was like, these poor kids, but they're like, there's these, like, they're clearly all these little friends. And one of the, they kind of like came up to me while I'm walking one of the dogs and they were like, hey, we're trying to raise money. And I was like, they're clearly making up what they're saying. I mean, they were like six years old. And, and they were like, so they were like, if we did like a race, would you give us a dollar? And I was like, okay, so what's the deal? I was like, where are you going to go? And they're like, well, run in the circle. And the first one around gets the dollar. And I was like, okay. And the third friend was like, I'm not going to run. I'm just going to, and I'm like, that's fine. And so they, and I was like, I looked at my wall. I'm like, oh God, do I have three? Like, and I happen to have $3 bills. So I was like, okay, they're going to run. And they think they're running for $1. And so then I just gave each one of the kids a dollar. And they were just like, oh my God, you're the nicest person. You know, and there's a part of me where I was like, oh, they're going to go back and be like, that guy in the parking lot gave us money. And it's going to be like creepy. But at the same time, it was one of those where I was like, okay, well, those kids were just being kids and now they have $3. And what are they going to be able to buy for it? Nothing. <laughs> but, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. Just something to think about. I think, I think it like, it, 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 it puts us, it puts us in the right vibe, the right energy. And um, I think that's like, May, I, I don't know. I got I to gotta brainstorm and think about it. I You know, I do kind of already do that, but I, it's like, I think sometimes when I get down or I feel stuck, that can help. Um, and so, you know, I would, I would just be like, hey, keep that rolling around in your heads this week. And maybe it'll help you feel better, you know, and that's the guilty thing. Maybe you're, maybe you're doing it selfishly to make yourself feel better. But if you're making somebody else's life better at the same time, who cares? So, uh, you know, buy somebody a random drink, you know, send, send somebody in your contact list, a random gift from Amazon. I love to do that too. 
um, you know, it doesn't have to be expensive, you know, and, uh, or, you know, I, I know it's hard because, you know, money can be tight and everything or, you know, or write somebody a letter, send someone a letter in the mail, you know, um, go through some stuff and, you know, maybe you've got something there that's brand new that you haven't used yet. And you're like, you know what? I think this is going to bring more happiness to somebody else. Do that. You know, um, I think it'll be, it's hard. My knee jerk reaction is to be an asshole. Um, not to people I know, but to kind of just like my knee jerk, it's that very New England sort of like, what do you want? Like, what are you after sort of attitude? That's just how we were raised. And like, I try to combat that by, by being like, okay, why don't we hear it out? And sometimes it's not great, you know, and, and you regret giving people that inch, but I'm telling you, it will pay off at some point. It'll pay off at some point. And I, I like to think to myself too, sometimes where it's like, okay, you know, I, I, I lost like 10 bucks a day and I'm like, okay, that's so, so I'll go get one less drink, you know, or I'll, I'll buy one less thing for myself. That's fine. You know? So, um, so try and think about that this week, do some of that. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. Just hang on to some like fun, fun things, help a friend, send somebody, say some, say, Hey, say, Hey to somebody, you know, send somebody a funny picture. I don't know, you know, get creative with it. But um, I am going to go. It's getting a little late, um, and I still have a couple things to do, um, important things to do that I was supposed to do earlier today, but whoops. Um, I just want to say thank you again for all of your support. If you are watching and you want to hit the thumbs up, please do that. I know somebody, every time I say this, somebody's going to hit the thumbs down, and that's fine. Two, um, if you click that bell, um, you subscribe and click that bell, I just want to let you know I am probably going to start doing random other day of the week live stream. Like, I do want to get back to playing the Nintendo because I want to be able to finish Mario on this Nintendo so I can move it off my desk. Um, but I was afraid because I thought something happened the last time that got like a mark on my channel, but it says I don't have a mark, but I don't know. Someone was weird. Um, but I do want to do that. And I almost went live on like Saturday night. So you'd get notified for those things where I like randomly sporadically think about doing that and everything. And I promise I'm not asking you to subscribe or do any of that to spam you or anything like that. So, um, I'm not one of those people. Uh, you know, I just do what, because, like, YouTube wants you to do that, so I don't know. Um, I found some material, though, I'm going to try and use, and then, um, I just wanted to say thank you again, um, to my Patreon supporters as well. Um, if you are one of my Patreon supporters, stay tuned, I'm going to post the contests, um, and everything that we're doing, um, the things for April this week, uh, I just, my grandmother with the hospital, like, threw me off, and then, um, I just, I'll have that in the next, like, day or two. We'll get that out there and have everything mailed out to everybody. So the paintings, uh, I don't know if somebody who won it or not is there, but I finished the Darkwing Duck. I pretty much finished this one black line. I can't get covered up. So I'm like, well, as soon as this is covered up, this will be in the mail. This was the, uh, this was the April, March was an orange bird painting. This was the February um, painting that one of the winners won, but I like it. I think it came out pretty good. Except for that, I don't know what I was thinking when I drew this on that. I use these like oil based paints over the acrylic paints because I feel like I like it gives it a defined line. Um, but sometimes when I F it up, it's hard to cover up with acrylic. So I might have to do like a line over it with the oil and then acrylic again to give it to smooth it out. Make it, I don't know. I'll get there. But anyway. I can't remember who won this off the top of my head, but I know sometimes you watch. So that's the Darkwing painting. Uh, I think I showed you guys. I did a little bit more of the Powerline one. Um, I did, uh, I showed you the Poochie one. I did a little bit more of the Mad Madam Mim. There's another one of these coming with the, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait. Actually, I finished the Jubilee, see? I don't remember if I showed you all this one or not. I already wrapped it in plastic. Um, and then I finished the Robin Hood, too. I don't remember if I finished these since the last time or not. So he's wrapped up because I put these for sale on the coffee site. Um, and then uh, I'm going to have this goes with this. See, I didn't show you guys this last week. So she goes like here. Let's see, I tried to get the vignette to go kind of around them together. So I just got to get them all them all finished up. You see my Scooby-Doo came out? How good this came out? This came out so good. I, like, love this one. Like, I like it so much, I don't want to sell it. But I've already promised somebody I would do a set. But he's not going anywhere until I finish the whole set. So, um, but this one, like, came out. This one's, like, bomb. I love this one. Um, 
yeah so i've got all my other that's all my scooby-doo guys there yeah so um somebody bought the power line one already which was very nice uh, i have to respond to that message but yeah jubilee and robin hood are both for sale um as of the recording of this on uh here there it is right there or up on there they're they're priced a little bit higher than normal because i've gotta go um things are just gonna start getting a little bit more expensive as i sell more of them i i feel bad sometimes about that because i feel like it takes the portability out of people's hands a little bit but it's just like the i base them kind of on the time the effort and the size of canvas that they all are but i try to keep them within a grasp like a reasonable space so the madman of mim with the art the the merlin and the madman of mim those um once i'm finished with those those are probably going to be like they, they come together will probably be like 225 ish somewhere in there um and i've got um some other ones too um, but yeah, Jubilee, Robin Hood's up there. I'll get this one out. Um, someday I'll finish this other one. But I got a whole bunch. whole bunch here. There's a Scrooge coming. Um, so check it out. Just You can check over there. You can follow me on there without... You don't have to purchase something to follow me on there. It's, it's almost like a Facebook Marketplace page. So um, anyway, I know. It's tough. It's tough. It's not obligated. That's why I don't take commissions. I like just suggestions. Because then, you know, life can change. Or maybe you don't love the outcome. And that's okay. Um, so I don't want you to feel pressured. So it's just there and I just leave it there. And eventually someday somebody might get to where they're like, yeah, actually I do want that painting, you know? So it's all, it's all good, everybody. Um, I'm going to go. Uh, I hope you are all having a, uh, a great evening. Um, Ooh, sorry, Mitchell, you came in right at the end. Um, but yeah, uh, I, uh, Beard freak, you're saying I don't charge enough. See, I feel guilty even charging what I do. So um, I appreciate that, though. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for your support. Um, thanks for hanging out. I, I really enjoyed this. Thanks for giving me an outlet to be able to just ramble off with and um, and hang out with all of you and um, spending your Monday nights with me. And hopefully you get this week started off right and that uh, the week treats you the way you should be treated, which is well. So um, thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Um, stay tuned. More content. And um, yeah. That's it. Cheers.